in Kyle Greenwood's book, Scripture and Cosmology, he says that the Old Testament writer's view of the heaven, earth, and seas was not figurative or metaphorical. They believed the three-tiered cosmos was the nature of creation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this view of the cosmos is wrong. No big deal. However, to what extent does a Deuteronomy 32 and divine council worldview depend upon this ancient Near Eastern worldview? In other words, how does a divine council worldview not suffer as part of the fallout from the collapse of ancient Near Eastern cosmology? The Elohim are real gods, but the where of their existence from an Old Testament view is not, for example. Yeah, I, th I think the, the the main thing to think of here is that, you know, on the one hand, you know, we can judge ancient Near Eastern cosmology you know, as true or false. And again, it's, it's not scientifically correct uh, by virtue of the tools of science. You know, I've, I've commented on this before. So things that an ancient text, the Bible included, what it says about the natural world, we have tools to actually be able to evaluate that. But the Divine Council worldview itself is not dependent on ancient Near Eastern cosmology because it really has to do with the activity of beings, you know, namely God and, and, of course, the sons of God in this case, uh, the activity of, of divine beings in relationship to the affairs of humans. So you could have no cosmology or some different cosmology or modern cosmology. It doesn't matter what the cosmology is, it's not going to affect whether the the divine world, again, the non-natural world, can intersect with the natural world. So I don't see any sense of dependence at all. Uh, part of the question is is about the where of their existence. And I've commented a number of times that, that all of this kind of language for the spiritual world, and again, we're not talking about whether the cosmology is correct or not. We're talking about the spiritual world now. We are forced, and the biblical writers are forced because they were humans, to use the language, the verbiage of place uh, for t any talk about the spirit world. You know, God's not going to give the human writers some vocabulary uh, that, that no one to whom they're writing would ever understand. In other words, they, they can't have specialized vocabulary that God zaps in their head. Oh, this is what we really call the spirit world. Use this world, you know, like with no vowels or something. You know, I mean, they're not, he's not going to give them vocabulary that no one else will understand. That defeats the enterprise of communication, which is ultimately why we have scripture. So, you know, we're forced to use, again, the language of place as though heaven was a, a where location, the heavens, you know, the, the spiritual world uh, that had like latitude and longitude, or you could measure the number of miles into the atmosphere or something like that. It, none of it is actually like that. We, the, the verbiage, again, borrows, again, from, from these sorts of conceptions, but none of them are correct. If, if I tried to articulate the spirit world using correct scientific cosmology, I'm going to miss the mark as widely as if I'm an ancient person. Because the spirit world, by definition, does not have latitude, longitude. It doesn't have you know, breadth and depth and all this kind of stuff. It, 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 it's a different thing that is separable from the vocabulary and experience of space or location. So it, I, th I think it's a good question. But again, be, behind the question, I think we have to, we have to remember the, just the vocabulary disconnects and the conceptual disconnects. And really the realm disconnects uh, in, in the case of, of the nature of this question.